Hello again, everybody that watches my channel. I'm Lewis Clark, aka Sonic Yoda, and I run a website called SegaDriven.com. And we're back with another collection video. So this time we're going to be focusing on the Dreamcast, which I think is the last console in my collection that we haven't covered. Oh no, tell a lie, we haven't done the Game Gear, but that's not in my flat, that's elsewhere. <laughs> and we'll probably, you know, we'll leave that one alone until I can probably get that. Uh, but yes. Uh, we're going to have a look at my Dreamcast collection first, I'll sh pick out some bits and pieces, stuff I like, and uh, have a little chat about that. And then we're going to do a and a which is incredibly short this time, because we've only had two sub uh, questions submitted in advance. So yes, anyway, on to my collection. So here is my Dreamcast collection. It's probably the smallest out of most of the consoles I own. Um, but yeah, it gets a lot of use. And uh, one of my favourite things, actually, with the Dreamcast is I'm really into the independent releases that are still coming out every now and again. So interesting things we have here are obviously Stonewind Collector's Edition, which has um, flyers and stuff, and this lovely little uh, 3D printed figurine of the main ship. It's a lovely little thing, isn't it? But yeah, um, so that's a lovely little package. And uh, if I remember correctly, there's sound effects under here, and a big old book of something. But yeah, um, and other games I've got independently include Ducks, Fire Striker, um, Gunlord, which is really, really good, uh, Last Hope Pink Bullets, Fit of Fury, which I don't unfortunately have a map for, but um, I play with the controller and it's just as enjoyable, uh, Iridesce, Rush Rush Rally Racing, and the wonderful Wind and Water Puzzle Battles. Um, here's my import stuff, so some Japanese bits and pieces in here. The Jewel in the Crown being my signed Izuka copy of Sonic Adventure 2. And I've got two loose American copies of Space Channel 5. Um, so yeah, uh, in, in a similar way in the way I play Mega Drive games, not massively bothered about whether or not a game has a, the correct box or is missing a manual or whatever. So we've got some loose bits and pieces like Buggy Heat, because I like my little driving games. Uh, there's a copy of Power Stone 2, which I printed the cover for, but yeah, it was just a loose disc. And what else we got? Um, what is this? Oh, it's Rayman 2. Yes. And I think, is that everything loose? Oh no, we've got a copy of Unreal Tournament. And yeah, that's the lot. So everything boxed is here. Some don't have manuals or some I've had to print things for. Like Choo Choo Rocket, that's actually a printed cover. And back cover, as you can see from the back here. Um, that's not the proper case for Crazy Taxi. It's one of these old... Uh, they're the rental cases that you sort of used to get PS1 games in. But yeah, there's that there. Um, personal favourites have to include Soul Calibur. Oh, yeah, that's uh, signed by the director of Soul Calibur 5. Despite the fact that he didn't work in this game. But hey, I met him. Find the first one for me. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Um, that's Jin Sonoya's signature, if I remember correctly. Is it? I'm, I'm guessing this is a J. <laughs> um, just looking at other favourites. Obviously, Shenmue. Um, what with it being the classic, that is. Um, I've actually played Mortal Kombat Gold an awful lot. I used to be a very, very big Mortal Kombat fan, so yeah. Um, things like this, I'm disappointed I can't really play anymore because uh, I do have a light gun, but it doesn't work with uh, LCD tellies, unfortunately. So uh, yeah, I have to use the controller now. And that's just not the way to play this game, unfortunately. I've got House of the 2, and uh, yeah, it's, I have the same problem for that. But yeah, there you go. There's a load of Dreamcast games. Right, that was the collection, so on to the Q&A. So I've got two questions, that's it, <laughs> and then I'll be out of your hair. Uh, so yes, first up, uh, we got another question from Titans Creed from Project Phoenix Productions. Thank you very much for all the support, buddy. You always <laughs> give me questions in advance, so that's of great help to me. Uh, anyway, but yes, he asks, considering we all know about how the Dreamcast downfall came about, how would you think they could have prevented the piracy issue? Right, so, um, I, I assume we're just talking about how it's very, very easy to pirate games. Uh, you can pretty much create a disc image of any game, and uh, with a little bit of tinkering, you can have them self-boot really easily. So, uh, yeah, piracy is a big problem with the Dreamcast, but 
as far as I'm concerned, I don't think piracy was a part of the downfall. Now, I know that's not the that's not what you're asking, so I'm not going to go on to that. But um, how could they have prevented the piracy issue? Um, it's a good question. Um, at the time, uh, DVDs were new, and it would have been. It, that, I mean, that would have been the easiest way to get around uh, the piracy issue. Police. All right, shut up. Thank you. Um, good. Yes. So, uh, yeah, uh, it, I mean, the, the big thing with piracy is that it's so easy to copy uh, GD-ROM discs because they essentially share a lot of similarities with CD-ROM discs. So you can create a disc image and burn it to a, a normal CDR as long as the game is not uh, exceeding the 700 megabyte limit of a normal CDR. So, yeah, um, the main way to get around that would have been to put games on a different disc format that wasn't readily available to pirate and copy because um, at the time... USB loading and flash loading was kind of a difficult thing. Um, so yeah, just the, the easiest way they could have got around it is introducing a new format, which I suppose they did in a way with GG-ROM, but it was just too close to CD-ROM. So yeah, that's going to be my answer. Not a particularly insightful one, but there you go. Um, and, right, last question then. <laughs> uh, Lewis Knight from Ready Player 2, which is a great podcast. You should go and check that one out. Links in the description below. Um, he asks, why was the Dreamcast such a disappointment? Now, um, I'm not entirely sure what you're going with, where you're going with this, Lewis, but um, I'm assuming when you say disappointment, you mean um, it wasn't a great seller. Um, so I'm going to answer that. Um, the big issue that it seems to be facing was that the PlayStation had such a massive install base that everybody was waiting for PlayStation 2. And when PlayStation 2 came out, it had the cheapest DVD player on the market. So that was the big issue running against the Dreamcast, is that it didn't have DVD playback uh, capabilities, and people wanted it, and it wasn't there. So despite the fact that it was a more powerful console and was uh, doing great arcade ports, like things like Confidential Mission and House of Z2, um, people just weren't into it, because <laughs> uh, the big thing was uh, DVD compatibility, and um, people were massively behind the huge leap that was VHS DVDs, and um, PlayStation 2 had the cheapest one on the market, so yeah, that was a problem. If by any chance that you mean uh, the Dreamcast was such a disappointment because you didn't like it, then fuck you. <laughs> the Dreamcast is awesome. So yeah. Thank you very much for tuning in for another collection video. I've been Lewis Clark, aka Sonic Yoda. You should probably go and check out my website, SegaDriven.com. We've got loads of news in that. Um, and yeah, subscribe to the channel as well because uh, I do video content and it's fun and I like it when people watch and comment. So yes, thank you very much for watching. Catch you all later.